Hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on transforming retail with RFID. My name is Lorna Malia, and I'm the marketing manager at Barcodes. With the highly competitive retail landscape, today's retailers must tackle many challenges in the era of industry transformation. Customers are expecting more than ever when they enter a retail store. So how do you stay ahead? Today, Susan Flake, Director of RFID Business Development from Zebra Technologies, is going to discuss the benefits of RFID, current trends in the industry, and how RFID will keep you ahead of the competition so that customer expectations are exceeded. We do have a Q&A feature available on this webinar, so please feel free to write down any questions, and we will address these towards the end as time allows. Please be sure to identify your organization when asking questions to help us provide an accurate response. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Susan. Susan, it's all yours. Thank you, Lorna. So like Lorna indicated, I'm gonna talk about the current trends within the marketplace uh, as it pertains to retail. And with that, every year, Zebra Technology conducts a retail vision study. The important piece of uh, this study that came out of it was the number of retailers that plan on implementing a buy online, pick up in store, omni-channel program. 90% uh, plan to do that by 2021. And if you think about it, um, the orders that are sitting on the water now coming across the seas are for the end of this year, beginning of next. So with that in mind, starting a program around inventory visibility to support an omni-channel effort is critical. Um, we also face the ever-changing uh, retail landscape uh, with the shift in consumer shopping from brick and mortar to online um, and the fact that e-commerce digital uh, is influencing 56% of the purchases today. Uh, a unified commerce merging all the channels that you connect to the consumer today so that she or he has one view of the brand. Uh, fast fashion and off-price strategies um, are are continuing to grow and emerge. Uh, often we hear about the apocalypse of, RFI, of, uh, of retail in the market space, but in truth, over 4,000 new stores opened last year. And we will continue to see uh, growth in retail, especially around online uh, uh, brands now opening up their own brick and mortar stores, which the stores themselves are turning into experiences, creating a destination. And then also the complexity of really getting to that customer and making the sell, as more social media platforms like Instagram and Facebook introduce independent shopping uh, functions to the consumer. Um, RFID is now a requirement to sell into some retailers, um, and uh, there are edicts out there uh, for that. In the apparel arena, RFID is not only for department stores, but specialty retailers are adopting. Um, and over 10 billion UHF passive tags are out in the retail space today. Uh, Geiger counter or locationing has been critical for efficient uh, location of product for omnichannel fulfillment. Um, new verticals, uh, specifically athletic wear, is emerging very quickly. Brands are sharing and notifying to their customers, to the retailers, their plans to implement RFID and saying ahead of time, hey, product will start uh, flowing in with RFID tags on it. Um, and then also we're seeing a trickle down effect. So RFID tags are found in retailers who do not have a current RFID practice in place today. Um, those that are selling national brands. Um, and then the cost of RFID tags continues to fall and new tags types are being introduced, uh, making item-wide implementation not feasible, but also economical. Um, we continue to see the four big use cases for retailers, which is inventory accuracy, um, correcting out of stock, loss detection, and also locating product. And then for the five uh, use cases for manufacturers, it's been receiving accuracy of inbound uh, raw goods, shipping accuracy of outbound, pick pack accuracy at the case level, and then electronic proof of delivery, as well as authentication and uh, anti-counterfeiting for brand protection. We have a number of North American retail deployments, and uh, I think the names on the uh, left uh, are a myriad of 
uh, both manufacturer brands and retailers, along with, uh, I think the most the two current ones that have been in the news has been Target as well as Lululemon. So with this, Target has uh, tagged everything that is fiber and uh, the, they are running in all 1800 stores, cycle counting weekly, but their big gain has been in leveraging the Geiger counter for omni-channel picking. Um, Lululemon has deployed to all stores. Every single item in their stores has an RFID tag. They do cycle counting uh, um, on a daily basis with ongoing omni-channel picking. Um, they even uh, ring up customer orders via RFID and it is extended out to their mobile application where you can actually uh, get live inventory feed directly incorporated into their loyalty application, all due to the benefits of RFID. Uh, major categories that have been uh, deployed within, our, within retail, um, you'll see the normal, the apparel, uh, but you'll see some ones here that you may be surprised as kitchen electrics, toys and games, um, some of the things that have been harder to tag um, with new tags and and uh, advancements in the technology, these things, uh, uh, these hurdles have been overcome. And you can see they're one of the leading categories of implementation. On average, if a retailer ha carries national brands, 30% of their inventory is source tagged, um, even if they are not running an RFID program. So if you have customers or, or so forth uh, that do sell national brands, it's always a great thing to do a store scan to see how much of that apparel may indeed be already tagged for them. And then these are, uh, Auburn University is the de facto standard for RFID in the US and these are uh, benefits that have been realized uh, throughout the retail uh, supply chain and documented by Auburn University. So reductions of out of stock by 60 to 80, um, uh, inventory accuracy 99 plus percent, uh, increased sales four plus percent, etc. These are documented from the university. These are not zebras. So these are um, benefits that have been uh, recognized and accredited uh, via third party. Again, supplier benefits, again, 99% plus accuracy. Um, the big benefit for a supplier has really been the reduction of chargebacks of up to 35%. Um, this is when a brand sends something to a retailer that doesn't match what the PO, and it goes through negotiations to remedy. In this case, that adds up to a lot of dollars and a lot of time. Um, so the reduction of chargebacks by up to 35% is a huge win for a supplier. Um, we uh, participated in a project with uh, GS1 and Auburn University called Project Zipper this past year. And what that entailed was eight brands and five retailers and we studied the shipping process from the manufacturer over to the retailer and measured what the accuracy was using current non-RFID versus RFID. And what we found was 31% of the orders were accurate just based on today's ways of doing uh, the supply and demand. Whereas those brands and retailers who were leveraging RFID we saw 99.9% .9 accuracy. So the inaccuracies could be anything from the wrong tag on the wrong product. Um, they ordered five blue and five red and they got four blue and six red, etc. cetera. Um, but in today's barcoded methods, uh, we saw 31% um, accuracy versus the 99% we were able to achieve with RFID. Based on that, we're taking it to Zipper 2 um, and we'll continue to expand. Uh, one of the things that we noticed was we got data back from the different retailers and brands in all different formats. So we're gonna standardize on EPCIS. We're also gonna take a look at brand authentication and validating 
uh, EPC matching a QR code or matching the UPC and making sure that when it leaves the manufacturer, it is the same product that arrives at the uh, retailer. And loss protection uh, to cross-check what's uh, left the DC actually arrives at the store. And then leveraging blockchain as our data ledger. So that'll run um, for this next year. We've actually kicked that off to get the further benefits. A paper has been written on this project and it's available on Auburn University's RFID portal. Um, one of the big benefits and the drivers behind uh, uh, RFID in retail has been omni-channel. Um, in the beginning of an omni-channel process, a lot of retailers ship from stores as opposed to the DC. It saved on shipping rates. Um, they tried to ship closer to the customer. And with that, they were able to see without RFID about 35 to 60% pick success. So they send an order down to a store, 35 to 60% of the time that store could find it and ship it. And if they couldn't, within a reasonable time, it moved to the next store, to the next store, to the next store until um, it was accurately picked. With that, each time that it goes up, the uh, shipping costs go up as well as labor and as well as you may end up disappointing the customer. A big transition has been uh, to buy online, pick up in store. And the real driver behind this has been the fact that if you get the customer back to the store, he or she will 40% of the time make an unplanned purchase when they're at the store. So they go to pick up their order that they've ordered online, um, but 40% of the time they'll pick up an auxiliary item. That is a substantial amount of revenue that can be uh, recognized. Uh, and in fact, uh, Target recently announced 6% of their uh, growth over the holiday season had been attributed to this buy online pickup in store this past holiday. So really bring the customer back to the store, they're likely to pick up other items either out of convenience or something that caught their eye while they're picking up their item. Also pick to the last unit. So what we see in um, retail stores today is approximately 20% of the inventory is represented at a single unit. So you may have one of at several different stores across the chain, but you don't have visibility to that. And typically if you have one of, you don't expose it to the web. So being able to see that you have this product out in your stores, you may either choose to transfer it from one store to another where it's um, popular for sale, or you can now expose it to the web and have a much larger selling audience. What we've also seen is a huge growth uh, among retailers. So 39% more retailers are using RFID um, of 2016 versus 2017. We've also seen tag saturation grow over that time period by 45%. We've seen brand saturation grow by 74%. And we've seen SKU saturation within the brand. So that means if they were tagging one style, they're now tagging uh, 65 styles. Um, within their, their, uh, their product offering. And the main driver for that is it's so much easier for them and more cost effective to be tagging everything as opposed to pulling certain product off on a value added uh, line to be able to source tag that. So we see over 1200 national brands um, tagging which relates to approximately 4,000 different names. We see full departments that are source tag now. Um, we're seeing brands benefit as well as retailers. And the two logos you see at the bottom uh, will right will be what is identifiable on the uh, tag to indicate that it is an RFID enabled tag uh, via the visual. We're also seeing the big adoption drivers for the data quality improvement, so you now have an accurate system of record and inventory visibility is maintained throughout the year rather than updating your system of record um, January or uh, whenever your fiscal ends uh, and taking that physical. Um, you're being able to expose more product to the web 
it's a huge reduction of peak declines. Um, being able to know confidently to send a new online order to a store and with a high degree of confidence knowing that they have that product in stock as they just cycle counted it hours before and uh, be able to fulfill that. Um, creating a seamless channel, so being able to offer um, all of the different methods that a customer has to reach you as one and she having a, a view of you as, as one. And brick and mortar as a destination, not a task anymore. Uh, and, and realizing that the customer can buy anywhere and the retailer can fulfill anywhere. Um, the other big benefit that's happening is because so many retailers have deployed, key lessons about those deployments are being shared. So keep it simple um, it, uh, from, a, from a deployment perspective. Use the GS1 standards uh, for RFID. Um, let store operations uh, team drive the pilot with help from IT and strategy. I will say that RFID is one of those technologies that really crosses the chasm uh, across uh, a, a company. Um, where all pieces of the company will be touched. Um, it's, it's not like plugging in a barcode scanner and making sure that it works. Um, it is really about inventory visibility and what you can do to leverage it, not only from a IT and strategy and store ops, but what can merchandising do with it? What are the analytics that you can learn from it? How does your, how does the shopping behavior get influenced, et cetera? So it is something that crosses all chasms. Um, easy integration today, um, inventory snapshot, uh, sales file, and a product file is pretty much uh, the standards for starting off, and then you would leverage that data and use your RFID data uh, to add to that and update as needed. Trust your RFID data, it's accurate. Um, measure the difference if we're using RFID data, how would that change our omni-channel order fulfill results? So naturally we would expect them to improve, but also the labor and time to pick decrease, uh, especially if leveraging the Geiger counter to help find those items within the store, and then also fulfilling a lot quicker. So these are some of the ways that some of the retailers today are offering curbside service or delivery within an hour um, because they are leveraging the Geiger counter functionality. Simple hardware footprint with a few handhelds per store um, often uh, is, is the way forward and is how all of the retail deployments have been, uh, have been deployed today. Focus on a business case creation. Um, allow enough time to get the data right. Sounds simple, but RFID exposes the data. And for instance, that can mean something as simple as the word gray, G-R-E-Y versus G-R-A-Y. Those will be two different items in an RFID world, whereas in a barcode world, they would have been one. Um, but RFID exposes that type of detail. Get all the stakeholders aligned on what needs to happen and when. Um, like I mentioned earlier, RFID crosses many business units. Let source tag items flow into the store before the software is to be live. So often we have tag up parties, um, maybe a bit of a misnomer, but tag ups um, occur and uh, making sure that uh, the product is tagged for accurate RFID cycle counting. Um, make sure you get the network team involved so they understand how the devices are going to be um, leveraged on the network and be updated, etc. Get online engaged so the project can be uh, measured as how it can impact the e-commerce sales. And then, as always, um, data is data. Take action on that data uh, that the RFID provides. With that, um, I conclude and uh, open it up for any questions. Susan, we had a question come in if we would be able to share the um, University of Auburn study um, link after the webinar. Yes, of course.
Absolutely. So we'll fo so I have that um, Vincent's email address. So we'll follow up with that. Um, let me check. Um, we also had another question. Um, does it make sense to tag all products with RFID? And um, is there an exponential level of improved efficiency that's gained um, when a company moves to tagging 100% of inventory? Yeah, so certainly. So tagging all items can definitely simplify the scope of an RFID program. Um, most retailers have rolled out at a department level, uh, tagging all items in a specified department and then uh, going on to expand department to by department as their program expands. Um, as categories continue to grow, um, greater benefits are realized. Um, those benefits uh, can include improved inventory accuracy, um, sales lift, reduction of out of stocks, uh, expansion of product available for omnichannel, and uh, really providing a better customer experience. Um, Wonderful. Um, we also had another question come in from Jordan. Um, what is the range of a Geiger counter? And is a Geiger counter just a function of a standard RFID gun? So uh, Geiger counter is a function of uh, the, the Zebra RFID handhelds. Uh, the range is often dependent upon the tag. So a typical apparel tag will have a different range than per se a jewelry tag. Um, but it'll, the Geiger counter will get you to within approximately one foot of the item. All right, um, Jordan, I hope that answers your question. Um, let's see, we had an, yep. Um, let's see, we also had another question. How does the RFID interact with the metal and the electronics PCBs? So I, I think they're asking, uh, can you tag metal? And so obviously there's reflection from metal. If we're tagging products that have metal, um, there are tags today uh, that can be applied to metal items and be read quite successfully, uh, such as uh, the silver silver line tags, which is uh, also something that uh, that Zebra offers is a the only printer that prints on metal tags as well. So um, those those types of hurdles have been overcome, um, but obviously. Uh, Alrighty, um, and then we also had another question come in. Um, what would you say is the top challenge to achieving um, a truly omni-channel enterprise and how can this be overcome? Yeah, so um, for that, it's really a lack of inventory visibility and uh, not keeping an updated system of record. So for instance, doing the physical once a year, updating the system of record, and then it typically degrades about 2%, maybe 3% month over month to where you're really at your worst uh, condition at in December, which is really should be your best time. So with RFID and regular cycle counting, you're able to maintain that 99% inventory visibility um, throughout the year. Um, but you have to remember the consumer shopping experience is, is really based on four factors. Um, the choice of product availability, um, the speed of getting that product, uh, the convenience of pickup or shipping, and price. Um, a, a successful omni-channel experience um, will really help maintain customer loyalty. However, as a retailer, you must be able to make that product available and easy to buy at a competitive mm -hmm. price. So inventory visibility and uh, leveraging RFID to enable successful omni-channel. Uh, will deliver continuous uh, consumer expectation. Great, thank you, Susan. Um, we had a question from Bill. Um, how many RFID readers are necessary for a typical 5,000 square foot retail apparel store to do a full um, store inventory? So that, that can be done in a matter of minutes. Obviously, one handheld uh, would do that. We often uh, 
would suggest to um, just as a uh, not only for redundancy but also for uh, multiple uses. So one may be doing a cycle counting while another is doing Geiger counter for omni-channel picks in the morning. So and that's that's typically um, retailers will cycle count in the mornings to have their stores ready and uh, one person will be cycle counting and the other person based on that data will be in the back room pulling to fill for out of stocks or an omni-channel pick. Okay. We would recommend two. Okay. Um, let's see, um, Oren asked, uh, can we use RFID tags on small care products? Yes, most definitely there's tags that fit that market. Okay. Um, and then another question uh, came in, can RFID systems determine if items are in a back room or on the sales floor? So obviously um, this is a question, does RFID read the front of house versus back of house? And there are different methods for which uh, some of the solution providers have implemented, uh, whether that be uh, physical, or otherwise mean of separating inventory from back of house to front of house? Uh, the short answer is yes. There's various methods of, of achieving that. Okay. Um, let's see, we had another question from Mike come in. Um, is there other materials besides metals that will cause bad slash no reads with RFID hardware? Um, some liquids. Um, but again, uh, tags have been created that address this. Um, so it's a matter of getting the right tag on the right product um, to overcome those. Okay. And then let's see, we had another one come in from Caleb. Um, is there a good RFID solution for company asset tracking? Uh, yeah, and I think uh, on that question, I, I, I would follow up with uh, Lorna here to uh, help facilitate that. Yep, Caleb, I will follow up right after this um, webinar. Um, let's see. Um, we had another one from John. Uh, is there a tool that uses calculations such as warehouse space, number of items tagged, um, that will give you a costing model um, implementation? Yes, so there's a few um, RFID ROI calculators out there. Uh, I think the one that's been used most in the industry is the one that's published on uh, RFID Journal, and we can provide a link for that as well. Okay. And then um, we had another person ask, would RFID still work through aluminum? So uh, if you're asking, does aluminum shield RFID, mm -hmm. um, the answer would be yes. Um, if you're asking, can you tag an aluminum bag? Yes, with, with special tags, you would be able to read it. So I'm not sure if the question is asking, are you using aluminum to be as a blocker? Or if you're trying to tag an aluminum item, you can you can tag and read an aluminum item. If you're using it as a shield, then yes, it would shield as well. Okay, and I'll follow up with that person as well, Susan. Um, let's see, uh, so we have time for one more question. Um, I see one just came in from Steven, um, asked what additional benefits could be obtained by using RFID readers at the checkout? Um, so it completes the system of record. Um, you, one of the big advantages is knowing that something was checked out at POS and then leveraging readers at the exits and entries. You know the product um, went out the door that was actually paid for versus that that was lost. Um, and also having readers at the doors identifies exactly down to the style, color, size of the item that's going out the door as opposed to uh, a, of a traditional EAS that's just telling you something is going through the door at that point. 
wonderful. It also, yeah, the, one other thing is it also gives you an immediate, uh, you, or you can leverage an immediate alert to fulfill that item back out onto the selling floor at point of sale. Perfect. Thank you, Susan. Um, Doug, I see your message coming in that you'd also like the link to the Auburn study. We will be sure to send that out um, to everybody that attended the webinar. Um, well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Um, you know, I saw a couple other questions come in. We will message you guys right after the webinar. Um, please reach out um, via phone, email. Um, email is lmaliatbarcodesinc.com. Um, thank you guys so much. Um, hope you guys have a great day.